So first of all, thank you for coming out this morning. Um, I'd like to express my thanks and appreciation to the Manitoba Chambers of Commerce for the opportunity to be here today and to talk to all of you this morning about something I'm very passionate about, our industry and what is happening in our industry going forward. I'd also like to acknowledge our board chair, Marina James, as well as uh, a few other board members, Michael Moore, Wade Linden, and Vince Warden, who are also in attendance this morning. So thank you for your support. So, I'd like to start today by asking you to imagine what Manitoba might look like in the not too distant future. In many ways, visually, it might look similar to today. But if you look past the surface, it could be very different. You drive home from work in your electric car, which you bought three years earlier because of high gas prices. High gas prices related to carbon pricing. With the newest models now having a range of 400 to 500 kilometers and public rapid charging stations almost everywhere, the anxiety about range and recharging that we had in 2010, it's gone. It's no longer a factor. You pull into your garage and you plug in your car. The solar panels on your roof, they've charged the energy storage batteries in your basement and now as the light of day fades, the smart energy controller you install when you bought the panel sends a message to your phone telling you you are no longer generating electricity, but rather using the storage batteries in your basement. It asks when you will need your car again so that it can optimize when to charge it. You are still connected to the Manitoba hydro grid and the energy controller will automatically switch to grid power in response to dynamic pricing signals to minimize your energy costs. The phone app tells you your current consumption and provides an estimated cost for your hydro use, as well as tips for how to lower that use. The app also prompts you to confirm the conservation choices you have made to balance energy and cost to convenience. Subject to the choices you as a consumer will make, the controller may turn off your hot water tank and potentially even your freezer at times, allowing you to adjust your thermostat for optimum efficiency and cost effectiveness. The smart home, the smart grid. In this vision of the future, energy consumers are also producers. The term that's been coined is prosumers producer and consumer. The prosumer generates with solar panels and stores electricity locally in their car and house batteries. They buy and sell energy transactionally from the grid, using their batteries to bridge between the en when the energy is generated and when it needs to be consumed. Batteries allow the prosumer to effectively trade electricity Individuals will have the ability to trade electricity, buying low and selling high, according to the price signals, the dynamic price signals from the grid. Having charged your car from the solar panel during the day and knowing that you only need your car for a very short trip later that day, the prosumer may elect to sell the excess energy that's in their battery on their car back into the grid. At night, energy will have, be more expensive. Prices will climb, why? Because there will not be solar energy at that time. And that is when we'll, there will still be demand. The lack of solar generation will have an impact on pricing dynamics. And the pricing dynamics will become very much real time versus one price, uh, no matter what time of day and no matter what time of year. So as you may have already guessed, the grid of tomorrow is not the grid of today. It is a smart grid, backed with sensors and analytics. To optimize supply and demand, it also is setting electricity prices dynamically. And I'm gonna talk a little bit later about the use of technology to drive all of this. It will not be based on human interaction directly. It provides incentives to prosumers to manage their consumption. In the future, 
All the credits for these services are tallied and instantly available to you from Manitoba Hydro on your smartphone. In fact, most of your interactions with Manitoba Hydro will be through technology. Questions about services on your bill, making payments, getting line locates are all handled online. You're saving money, getting great service, and taking full advantage of not only your solar panel system, but also the reliable, renewable, clean energy provided by Manitoba Hydro. And you've reduced your carbon footprint and your energy bill, your energy consumption should be less. You can even have a similar system for your business to perform the same functions that they do for you in your home, helping you to keep your production costs down, your operating costs down, and improve your efficiency and your profits. Is it interesting? Is it far-fetched? This future is so much closer than any of us realize or think. We refer to what's happening in our energy value chain as disruptors. And disruptors can have a negative connotation. Disruptors is change, positive and negative. But there are disruptors in the energy value chain, and it's occurring worldwide. As we enter what I believe is the biggest period of change for the utility business since a post-war mass electrification. Consider how much has changed since Y2K. When we didn't email, we faxed. Data was stored on disk, not the cloud. The World Wide Web was in its infancy. And your cell phone, if you had one, made only telephone calls. That's it. Who would have dreamt of the reality we live in today in those early days? That is the thing about exponential growth related to technology. It's mild in the early days, and then it explodes, and if you're not prepared for it, takes many by surprise. For decades, there has been only one utility model, large central generating plants, moving electricity through networks of power lines to customers who value stability, and reliability. Economies of scale made this the most efficient model. To supply energy to customers, utilities were monopolies, selling, in a com selling a commodity product in a market where customers had little choice. Customers will have a greater range of choice as a result of a different energy value chain. It's all changing. So now let's talk about what's driving those changes. What are these disruptors I've been referring to as we plan for the future? In my opinion, there are five key drivers. And what's important to understand about these is these drivers are interrelated. It is an integrated system. The first one, new technologies, which I touched on already, such as vastly improved energy storage systems and information networks. Secondly, the electrification of transportation. Third, the growth in distributed self-generation. Fourth, the decarbonization of our economy in response to climate change. And fifth, and finally, and the one I believe that is the most important, the changing expectations of you, our customers. Advances information technology, creating the Internet of Things, is a key driver. Our increasingly wired world, or wireless is probably more correct at this time, makes it possible for devices to talk to one another in ways we never imagined five years ago. That also means we have new ways to interface with this new technology, providing more automation. But at the same time, this is also providing individuals, our customers, with more control. More control 
gives you the ability to balance and optimize. Whether it's Nest in your thermostat, Tesla in your car, or Google in your home. Competition to manage your energy through internet-connected devices will be fierce. Prosumers will have options. It also means, though, that cybersecurity, something we at Manitoba Hydro spent a lot of resources on today, a lot of focus on cybersecurity, will become even more important in the future because there will be more points of entry into this integrated system. Technology advancements are also driving down the cost of solar panels and batteries. Inexpensive solar panels may mean cheap energy when the sun is shining, but we will need inexpensive batteries to use that energy at night. Batteries are key and fundamental to unlocking the potential for solar to drive the energy industry. The whole world is desperately hunting for new storage technologies. That will create a tipping point in our industry. Steadily advancing battery technology also plays a role in a couple of other ways. Namely, the electrification of transportation, which I touched on earlier, and the rise of distributed generation. Battery technology is already driving a paradigm shift in that what will power our cars, our buses, and trucks in the coming years. The electrification of transportation represents major opportunities to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, as we see from the objective of the federal government in targeting that all new cars sold in Canada by 2040 be zero emission. And you can all see by the rebates that were announced that the intention is to accelerate the acceptance of electric vehicles. And what we know is in Manitoba, when the rebates were announced in the most recent federal budget, 80% increase in the purchase of electric vehicles in Manitoba. Manitoba Hydro is proud to have already been involved with this work, with New Flyer, in the development of battery-powered buses and rapid charging facilities. And there's been some great success there, thanks to the hard work of New Flyer. The electrification of transportation is only going to speed up as batteries improve and vehicle production costs continue to decline. Increasing carbon taxes, environmental concerns, and government incentives are going to help drive the change faster than I think any of us anticipate. I was speaking with somebody at uh, Bison Transport, and Tesla is already talking to them about electrifying their entire fleet. The shift from fossil fuel to electric powered transportation will have wide ranging impacts to commerce and industry in Manitoba. And we will need to carefully consider the impact well beyond Manitoba Hydro. And with other non-utility companies entering the vehicle charging fields, such as Tesla, which is a given, they've already issued an RFP to put charging stations from Manitoba to BC along the highway. The challenge is how do we respond to the change in a way that is in the best interest of our customers and Manitoba's energy future. New and improving technologies are also driving the rise of renewable distributed generation, such as photovoltaic rooftop solar panels. We ran a pilot a few years ago, and what we saw with our own solar project was that there is a tremendous demand for localized self-generation when the economics make sense. Improved solar cells are offering levels of efficiency unimaginable 10 years ago. Smart energy controllers can send excess power produced by customers back to the grid, offering the potential to help balance local demand and provide customers with savings on their bills. 
Many new suppliers are certain to enter this market, offering distributed generation, offering home energy storage systems, and they will be offering these directly to the customer or, as we like to say from a Manitoba Hydro perspective, behind the meter. In fact, on August 19th, Tesla announced their intention to begin renting rooftop solar panels in select U.S. cities, and they're renting them for $50 a month. And they're not going to charge you if you change your mind and want those solar panels removed at some point. Distributed self-generation, while providing customers with additional control over energy sources and consumption, poses multiple challenges for utilities across North America because we will now be managing a two-way flow of energy. A bi-directional flow of energy versus the current model is a one-way flow of energy. And it adds material complexity in terms of how we manage the grid to ensure reliability and stability, which we have a, an amazing reputation for. So it's my belief that decarbonizing the economy will be a major factor in changing the energy landscape going forward. As governments worldwide look to reduce carbon emissions, renewable electricity is going to play an important role, not only in transportation, but also in heating and industrial processes. If you look to Quebec, Quebec has now said they are going to electrify all uses of energy, from heating all the way through to any point of energy use. The drive to decarbonize is not confined to any one region or market. Here in Manitoba, our electricity supply is already 99% clean and renewable, meaning we are vastly ahead of our, the curve of, on this. However, many of the states where we sell wholesale power, they were previously reliant on coal for electricity production. They are already adopting legislation mandating that electricity come from 80 to 100 percent renewable sources. For some states, it's by 2050. For some, that target is 2040. And for others, it is even earlier. Even in Canada, the federal carbon charge, and recent changes to environmental legislation are driving the shift towards renewable energy sources, such as hydro, wind, and solar. And we don't want our customers to forget that Manitoba Hydro is 99% renewable today. The last major disruptor, the one I believe is most important, is changing customer expectations. Customers today have been Amazoned and Googled. They are using whatever information they need. They, our customers are used to having what inf information they need, instantly available at their fingertips through this small device. Customers will be able to control so many parts of their, night, their life through this device going forward, much more so than today. Our customers expect the same level of service that they do from other service providers, instantaneous service and information from their utilities. At Manitoba Hydro, we've been seeing this trend for the last five years. For example, customers today expect immediate responses to questions regarding power outages on social media, 24-7 information, continuous updates. They also tell us they want to be able to monitor their home and business energy use and perform these interactions online using the phone. The generation that has grown up with the internet is upon us and it is changing how we interact with our customers. How it works is complex. We're integrating technology with legacy IT. Our customers aren't concerned about that. Our job is to integrate it, to make it seamless for you, to give you the choice to use this device to manage your relationship with Manitoba Hydro. 
because they're looking at e-commerce, they're looking at financial services and other online companies and the expectations are that we should be able to deliver and interact with them in the same way. It is defining the future commercial relationship. So, the change is already upon us. And we've been responding. We've enhanced our social media presence. We've added new technologies and processes. We're speeding up the flow of information from our field staff to our customers. And we're adding more self-service options to our web presence. Again, with every new opportunity, and this is a material opportunity for Manitoba Hydro, given the focus on clean, renewable power, and we are 99% clean, renewable power. With opportunity, though, comes challenges. We are asking ourselves, what technology do we invest in? How do we ensure reliability, which is our mandate to serve our customers so that when you turn the light switch on, you know for certain that energy will be there? How do we manage this two-way flow of energy in a system that was not designed for that? Do we have the right skills in our organization to embrace the opportunities and to address the challenges? And what are the costs of these changes? So those are the five big disruptors changing the energy value chain. And I need to be clear, this is not a Manitoba Hydro issue Every electric and natural gas provider in North America, around the world, is struggling with how to deal with these disruptors. Even everyone here in this room, I would think you've been touched by these in some way, and it's impacted your business. So, how do we respond as your utility? What steps can we take at Manitoba Hydro to ensure we are continuing to meet your needs while investing wisely? How can we ensure that you and your business are getting the best value for your energy dollar? And how do we prove to you that Manitoba Hydro is in the best position to address those challenges and take advantage of those opportunities for Manitobans? About three months ago, we started looking at this. We began the development of a 20-year strategic plan, a long-term strategy. We've been in a building phase for a number of years, built, working on critical major projects like Kiosk, Bipole 3, and now the Manitoba-Minnesota transmission line. But as these projects wind down and are completed, we will need to shift gears. Our long-term strategy will lay the groundwork for that. One of our first steps was to talk to you, our customers, as well as our regulator, our owner, Indigenous communities, NGOs, and various business associations and stakeholders. And we asked you, what do you want and what do you need from Manitoba Hydro in the next 20 years and in the next 10 years? Over the course of the summer, we held meetings with these stakeholders and we gathered that input, and that is informing our strategy as we go forward. We're also talking to our employees to find out what they think we should be doing tomorrow, and just as importantly, what we could be doing better today. As a senior leadership team, we've been looking at these five disruptors, and we're asking ourselves questions. How will this affect us here in Manitoba? What could the potential impacts be to our business? Is there an impact on revenue? Is there an impact on cost? What are the risk framework and models that we need to think about? And what will the regulatory environment need to look like to operate in a dynamic such as the one as I described? The energy value chain of the future is going to be substantially different than the one we know today. And any future change brings risk, but it also brings opportunity for utilities like Manitoba Hydro who are well positioned given the source of our energy and the fact that we are looking to get in front of these changes and plan for the changes. We're doing our utmost to ensure that whatever the strategy looks like in the end, because we don't have it yet, we're working on it, it reflects the needs of you, our customer. That needs to be our North Star. 
So whenever we consider any future action, the one question we must always ask ourselves is, does this promote a sustainable energy future in Manitoba for Manitobans? I'm confident if we keep that in mind, we will develop a strategy that will be successful and that Manitoba Hydro will continue to be the trusted, low-cost energy provider it has always been. We have a lot of work to do. What I love about integrated utilities, it's a very, very complex business. The complexity in our business is increasing given the changes in the energy value stream. So building this strategy that's forward-looking will take us some time, and we're targeting to have something to share by late winter. But even then, the work won't be over because we are operating in an industry that is experiencing and will continue to experience change. What is unknown is what is the pace of that change. No, so, no single plan will have all the answers, but we will be focused on the variables that will be impacting our industry, optimizing all of the opportunities, and making sure we take advantage where there is value and benefit for our customers and Manitobans. So, while we may not be ready to power all of our cars with hi renewable hydroelectricity in three years, or have the latest behind the meter technology to deploy in the next 12 months because that energy future for the prosumer requires that behind the meter technology, you can rest assured we are thinking about these issues and we're charting a plan forward to ensure that we continue to meet the needs of all Manitobans going forward. Thank you so much for your patience and your interest.